Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I've had quite a few funny moments in my life and quite a few embarrassing moments as well. But at least I could say people haven't seen me with ripped pants. Although I do have to say my jeans don't feel as tight as they used to be, at least below the waist. The last half hour or production episode, as I sometimes call them, had three individual episodes or segments as some refer to. I'm not really one of them. This is the first time in the series where a half hour slash production episode has two 11 minute episodes since the previous one had two episodes that are less than 11 minutes and both episodes here are 11 minutes long. Ripped Pants is the episode where Spongebob rips his pants on the beach and everybody laughs which he uses to get attention. Like Bubble Stan, this episode premiered on July 17, 1999, which, as I already mentioned, some people and Nickelodeon consider to be the official premiere of Spongebob, even though I consider it to be on May 1, 1999 with Help Wanted, Reef Blower, and Tia the Trito. Bubble Stan is iconic, but its sister episode is talked about much more often, and most likely because the ripped pants are considered more memorable than the bubble blowing, and more happens in this episode. This episode introduces a lot of random background fish that make cameos in crowded scenes in the show, including Tom, the fish who is known for yelling CHOCOLATE in episode 102, Chocolate with Nuts. There's also more moments between Spongebob and Sandy giving those damn shippers a reason to watch, which shouldn't be the only reason. This episode also introduces Larry the Lobster and Goo Lagoon. Larry's basically that one big and muscular guy you'd see at the beach. He's most well known as a lifeguard, but this isn't established until episode 82, Sponge Guard on Duty. This episode will just show off his weightlifting talent. He's not one of the seven main characters, but in my opinion, he's one of the most well known recurring characters. He's memorable compared to most of the background fish because he has a name that doesn't change from episode to episode like some of the fish, and is a sea creature other than just a fish. Goo Lagoon is also that stereotypical beach location in the series. An underwater beach. Sure. I feel this episode is one of, if not the most relatable episode of the series, since it features everything any average guy goes through. Embarrassment, making people laugh, taking jokes too far, and learning from his mistakes. All for a girl I might add. This episode features the series' first original song, since Living in the Sunlight, which played in Help Wanted, is owned by Tiny Tim and not Nickelodeon. Growing up as a child, I thought that they would have professional songwriters and composers write the songs on this show, but as an adult, I learned that while the usual music composers create the track, but the writers of the episodes write the lyrics to the songs. The song featured in this episode was written by Peter Strauss and Paul Tibbet. Tibbet was one of the writers for this episode, and Strauss provides Spongebob's suave singing voice for that song. But enough on random facts, let's watch the episode and relive one of the funniest episodes of the series. So the episode starts up and we're introduced to Goo Lagoon, the beach setting up Bikini Bottom. An underwater beach. Sure. Spongebob and Sandy are hanging out at Goo Lagoon having a good time. Spongebob starts playing with the sand and making Sandy laugh. During this little time, we are introduced to Larry the Lobster when he comes up to them and asks them to come with him to lift weights. Sandy agrees, but Spongebob looks visibly disappointed. He then takes them to Muscle Beach. When they get there, Sandy lifts away, and while Spongebob doesn't want to watch Larry lift, he does. After this, he lifts a stick, but nobody is impressed. When he sees Larry lift the bleachers with a bar in the middle, Spongebob grabs two, count them, two, marshmallows for his stick to make it look like a weight. He tries to lift it, but he's not very strong, and he tries so hard, he ends up ripping his pants, making this the perfect cartoon for anybody who's ever ripped their pants at some point in their life. Finally a cartoon for me! Everybody laughs, and Spongebob becomes embarrassed. But this doesn't last long because a surfer fish named Scooter tells him how funny he was, making Spongebob realize that everybody thinks he did this on purpose, so he decides to use this for his own good. Later on, Spongebob is playing volleyball with Sandy and Larry on his team. He seemingly gets jealous at Larry's skills, so he tries to show off, but that doesn't go well. So he rips his pants again, which makes everybody laugh again. Then they play frisbee and Spongebob purposefully lets himself get hit by the frisbee and rips his pants again. 
After this, Spongebob rips his pants at the ice cream stand and the snack bar, but everybody's more annoyed now and they don't really laugh, except for Sandy, which was a sign he was overusing it. Later on, when lots of fish were surfing, Spongebob ripped his pants while surfing, but then the wave knocks him off the surfboard and washes him up on the beach. The lifeguard thinks Spongebob is just a cardboard box at first, but when he realizes that it's a guy, he runs over to Spongebob, becomes sad, and draws a crowd over. Sandy comes over too, and Spongebob speaks weakly, but then he reveals he had only pretended to drown, which creates this lifeguard meme and makes everybody angry and they walk away in disgust, leaving him by himself. Even Sandy was mad at him since she was worried sick. After this, Spongebob tries to think of something better, so he comes up with pants ripped off, but nobody was around to see this. But what made him the most upset was that Sandy left him by himself and hung out with Larry. At this point, Spongebob realizes he didn't have to act the way he did to get Sandy's attention, and he thought he was the biggest loser on the beach. Then he runs into a girl who forgot to put on sunscreen, a guy who got sand in his buns, and a whale guy who everybody forgot about after they buried him in the sand. Spongebob tells them that he lost his best friend. How did he lose Patrick? Has he been there the whole time and we never saw him? Spongebob grabs a guitar made out of sand and starts playing it, singing about his feelings and what happened, starting the iconic Ripped Pants song. The other three characters join him, girls gather around to see the performance, and Spongebob sings very suave-like. After the amazing song is over, Spongebob and Sandy hug and become friends again. She tells him to be himself if he just wants to be her friend. Larry comes up too and asks Spongebob to sign his pants. When he does this, Spongebob's underwear rips, leaving him naked, and the episode ends. So that was Ripped Pants, and it is definitely amazing. As somebody who loves all the episodes, even the worst episodes of all time, I'd argue this is one of the best episodes ever. I'd also say this episode is more memorable than the previous episode, but that's because more happens and there's a fan favorite song. To show how popular this episode is, during the ultimate Spongebob Sponge Bash, a celebration of the show's 10th anniversary, this episode was voted as number 3 by fans, and Nathan Kress said this was his favorite episode. Even Tom Kenny himself said this was one of his favorite episodes, and the reasoning he gives here was pretty much me during high school and occasionally in college. It also re-emphasizes my statement on why this episode is so relatable. The song itself has left an impact as well and was part of the Spongebob's Grace Hits CD released in 2009. During high school, I had a friend who constantly wanted to hear me sing the Ripped Pants song, which goes to show how great it is. Additionally, I like to sing along to Spongebob songs when watching reruns, and this one is no exception. I also feel Larry the Lobster was shown off nicely. He's really that one-dimensional, muscular guy on the beach who loves working out. Some of those people sometimes have a tendency to show off, like when he's lifting weights, but he still has a very friendly side. While he may not have actively tried to make Spongebob feel inferior, but it was really Spongebob and his possible jealousy that made him feel that way. Goo Lagoon is also a good place, but since it's your stereotypical beach area, I have nothing else to add here. A good story is something anybody can relate to, and this episode has exactly that. Whether it's from a TV program, an interactive video game, a movie, or this, relatability keeps people engaged, which is another great factor of this episode. Of course, other episodes have relatable storylines, but this feels more effective than most others since the lesson about being yourself at the end is important to kids, and the consequences Spongebob faces due to his actions have quite an impact on somebody. While the comedy and the song in this episode are legendary, the relatable storyline also sticks with people and is another reason why this episode is one of the most amazing episodes of the series even to this day. Also, let's not forget the comedy. Look at this. And this. And this. Hilarious. Ripped Pants is stellar and still holds up as an amazing episode because of its story, comedy, and song at the end. And as somebody who occasionally did funny moments like that to get attention sometimes, this episode really speaks to me. However, since I apparently ripped my pants, I gotta get out of here before people find me and start laughing at me.